Hello, it's your grandpa Graham again. So I just I wanted to see how your day was. So did you have a good day? Did you do good? Did you do all your chores? Did you do exactly what your mom and dad wanted you to do? You sure? Because it's important that you do what you want, what they want you to do. So sometimes it may not make sense, and sometimes you think they're being mean, but what they're doing is making sure that you're safe and that you grow up and be the very best person you possibly can be. So listen to them. So I picked out a story that's kind of like that. It's called Pinocchio. So Pinocchio was, was one of my favorites. I told you about the little records that my grandma and grandpa Weber had got me and that I'd listen to them. And one of them was the story of Pinocchio. And it's a story about a little boy who doesn't always do what he's supposed to do. And sometimes he gets in trouble and he's made out of wood and he's trying to be a real boy. And that's just sometimes with other little kids is they, they want to grow up. And if you listen to your mom and dad and if you do what's right. And one thing about Pinocchio, and you'll hear about it in the story, when he lies, his nose grows. So be careful. Measure your nose every day uh, because your nose may not grow. But ask your mom, if you pee in the street, you'll get a sty in your eye. So don't ever forget that. So the story of Pinocchio. It doesn't start out once upon a time, but I'm going to start it out. Once upon a time, long ago in Italy. Italy's a really, really neat place and you should go there. Uh, there lived an old clockmaker named Geppetto. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock went all the clocks in his shop. When he worked, Geppetto felt very, very happy. But when he rested, a sad feeling came over him. Ah, he would think, all my life and no child to call my own. One day, Geppetto got so lonely, he carved a puppet from wood in the shape of a little boy. The arms and legs could move. He cut and sewed a nice outfit for the puppet, as if it were a real boy. I will call you Pinocchio, said Geppetto. These are kind of funny names, aren't they? And laid the wooden puppet down onto a bed. But something happened. From out of the window, a big star twinkled bright. Geppetto looked, at the window, looked out the window at the twinkling star, <clears throat> and he said, Bright star, if I could make one wish, it would be that I could have a real boy of my own. But of course he knew that wasn't possible. But that night, the same big star swooshed right into Geppetto's room, and it changed into the blue fairy. The blue fairy flew over to the bed. Little wooden puppet, said the blue fairy. In the morning, you will be able to walk and talk like a real boy. And she tapped the puppet one time with her wand. Uh, and if you can prove that you are brave and true, someday you'll be a real boy. Pinocchio's eyes opened. One more thing, said the blue, blue fairy. Suddenly, a cricket appeared. He was dressed mighty fine, and he could talk. Meet the cricket, said the blue fairy. He will stay with you and help you make wise choices because your life is determined by the choices you make. And with that, the blue fairy went whoosh, and was gone out of the window and up into the night sky. When Geppetto woke up the next morning, he said, I'll go take my puppet out of the bed. But the bed was empty. Here I am, father, said Pinocchio from the other side of the room. Geppetto swung around. What, you can talk? Yep, I am Pinocchio, your boy. How can this be, said Geppetto in shock. Then he said, but who cares? He rushed over and swept the wooden puppet into his arms. Pinocchio, he said, and he said it in great, great happiness. One day, Pinocchio said, I want to go to school like the other boys. Of course, said Geppetto, but he did not have the money to buy school books. Later that day, Geppetto came back home with school books. Now you can go to school. But father, where is your warm coat? With a wave of his hand, he said, no need to worry about that. What matters is that you will go to school tomorrow. 
See, he loved his, his child so much that he sacrificed his warm coat so he could have books to go to school. He did not want Pinocchio to know he had traded his warm coat to buy the school books. The next morning, Pinocchio said goodbye to Geppetto. He skipped along the path to school, humming as he went. The cricket rode on his shoulder, happy too. Coming up to them on the path was a fox and a cat. And where are you going on this fine day? said the fox. I am going to school, said Pinocchio. On such a fine day as this, it's too nice to be stuck inside school. You should come with us to the fair. Listen to me, said the fox. He put his arm around Pinocchio's shoulder. Anything you need to know, you can learn at the fair. It's not true. It's not true. Really, said Pinocchio. Take it from me, said the fox. Pinocchio, said the cricket. He does not know what he's talking about. The fox covered the cricket with his hat. No one could hear the little fellow as the cricket tried to call out, Pinocchio, don't listen to him. Okay, said Pinocchio. Let's go off to the fair. And off they went. And what a fair it was. By the gate was a man dressed in white. He called out, come in, come in, right this way. Get your tickets here. With a sad look, Pinocchio said to the fox and cat, I don't have any tickets. The man was selling old things at the table near the gate. He called out, hey, you, sell me those school books of yours. That is how you can get money for tickets. Pinocchio was so bright and colorful and exciting that the next thing Pinocchio knew, he had sold his school books. No, Pinocchio, stop, called the cricket, who finally got out from under the fox's hat. But Pinocchio, the fox, and the cat did not hear them. They were already at the fair. On stage was a puppet show. I'm a puppet too, said Pinocchio. I can dance like that. He jumped right up onto the stage and started to dance with the other puppets. Look at the new puppet. It has no strings. No strings, said another amazed. Everyone laughed and laughed and laughed, and they threw coins on stage. The man who ran the fair saw the coins fly onto the stage. Well, no, he said, rubbing his chin. This puppet with no strings will make me rich. The next thing Pinocchio knew, he was picked up and thrown in a birdcage. In the next moment, the door was boom, shut locked. Hey, get me out, called Pinocchio. But the person who had thrown him in just left the room. Only the cricket heard Pinocchio's calls. The cricket ran back and forth and in and out, trying to find a way to free the lock, but he could not unlock it. I'm stuck, cried Pinocchio. How did this happen to me? All of a sudden, poof, there was the blue fairy. Tell me something first, said the blue fairy. How did you get inside the cage? Tell her what happened, said the cricket. Well, Pinocchio stopped. Could he really tell the blue fairy what happened? What would she think of him? Um, I was robbed, said Pinocchio. Is that right, said the blue fairy with a frown. Pinocchio's nose began to grow. Yes, I was robbed by two, no, 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 by four men. His nose grew some more. They took my books. They made me come here and they threw me in a cage. His nose grew longer and longer and longer until Pinocchio could see nothing in front of his face but one big, long, giant nose. Why is my nose so big? Pinocchio cried out. Pinocchio, said the blue fairy in a stern voice, you must know what the truth really is. I guess so. I wanted to come to the fair. I came here with a fox and a cat. His nose grew shorter. I had to sell my books to get some tickets. Had to, said the fairy. I mean, I decided to sell my books to get tickets. His nose grew shorter still. Then someone, someone put me in this cage. His nose grew back to normal. Good job, Pinocchio, said the cricket. Well done, said the fairy. Now I'll get you out of here. Here are your books, and Pinocchio is holding the same new books in his hands again. Now this. You are on your own from now on. Make sure you do the right thing next time. And she was gone. Pinocchio was back on the road to school. A coachman drove up and said, Hey, kid, how about a ride? <clears throat> no, thank you. I'm going to school. 
You'll ride faster with me, said the coachman to Pinocchio. He said to himself, he will ride faster, all right, but not where he thinks he's going. All right, I want to get to school right away. When Pinocchio was inside the coach, the coachman said, Say, kid, why do you think boys like you go to school? Mm, to learn things and to grow up, I guess, said Pinocchio. So we can do what we want. Well, said the coachman, what if I told you you could do what you wanted right now? Right now? Yep. Think of it. Skip the books. Skip the school. Right now. How would you like that? To have all the candy you can eat. All the candy? Yep. Ice cream, too. Of every flavor. You ever want to smoke a cigar or play pool? Uh, all this and more at Pleasure Island. Mm, Pleasure Island? Best place in the world for boys like you. Don't listen to him, Pinocchio, shouted the cricket. Why wait, said the coachman. I know just where Pleasure Island is. This is your lucky day, kid. So what do you say? Let's go there, said Pinocchio. I'm going to Pleasure Island. Ugh. Uh, uh, said the cricket, waving his hands in the air. This cricket, he's working hard, but I, I don't think he does a good job of communicating well. Uh, after a while, the coach stopped. You got a boy with you in that coach, said a dark stranger to the coachman. Yep, the coachman grew, grabbed Pinocchio and threw him down on the ground. He's all yours. Now pay up. The coachman reached out of something. Was it money from the dark stranger? And then the coachman drove off. What could it all mean? But as Pinocchio looked around, he no longer cared. For everything the coachman had told him was true. Heaps of candy all over the place. Tubs of ice cream in every flavor. Boys like him could eat and eat and eat and play all day. None of them had to work clean up. There were even cigars. Little kids smoking cigars. Uh, if you wanted one. And the pool tables to play on. But after a few days, something was odd. Where did all the boys go? He asked the cricket. All I see are donkeys. I must say, there used to be more boys around here, said the cricket. Just then, one of his ears popped into a donkey ear. And then the other ear popped into a donkey ear also. Oh, cried the cricket. What is happening to you? I don't know, honk said Pinocchio. Pinocchio and the cricket saw a line of donkeys led by a dark stranger onto a truck. Oh no, said the cricket. Now I get it. Boys get turned into donkeys here. Then the donkeys are sold. Pinocchio, we have to get out of here fast while we still can. Let's all, said Pinocchio. His two feet had popped into four. Run quick, said Pinocchio. One good thing about Pinocchio's new four legs is he could run very fast. Quick, quick, they ran out of Pleasure Island. Soon they were on the dock by the ocean. Please, sir, Pinocchio cried out to a man at the dock. I'm looking for an old man named, named Geppetto. Do you know him? Honk. Sounds like you're getting a bad cold, said the man. Hmm, Geppetto, that's the old man whose son left one morning and did not come back. He went out on a boat to look for him. And no one has seen the poor fellow since. <gasps> oh no, this is all my fault, said Pinocchio. I must look for my father. Pinocchio jumped off the dock and into the ocean. The cricket jumped in too. Most of Pinocchio was still made of wood, so he could float on the ocean. Father, he called out, paddling the water with his arms. Father, but there was no answer. All Pinocchio could see around him was blue water everywhere until... What was that? Far away? Something was rushing up. Something big and very fast. In a moment, a giant whale, oh my goodness, big huge whale, was upon them. It opened its giant jaws and in one gulp, oh, swallowed Pinocchio. Skin, skin. What's going to happen? Rushing inside with all the seawater tumbled Pinocchio and the cricket. When they came to a stop, they saw that they were in the dark belly of a whale. Are you okay, said Pinocchio to the cricket. I'm fine, said a voice of an old man. Wait a minute, father, is that you? And there was Geppetto. Funny who you run into places like that. 
Father, father, it's me. My son, said Geppetto, I, I thought I was dreaming. They hugged in joy. Look, said Geppetto, as three fish swam by, there goes our dinner. Father, I have an idea. Let's make a fire. Grilled fish tonight? No, 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 no. I mean for us to get out, said Pinocchio. He gathered driftwood and got a flame going. This is how we'll make the whale sneeze. Pinocchio waved his arms over the flame and soon it made a lot of smoke. And soon clouds of black smoke were rising up and the whale gave a cough. Hang on, said Pinocchio. And then, ah, in one big sneeze, Pinocchio, Geppetto, and the cricket flew out of the whale's mouth, rolling over and over and over in the seawater. At last, they rolled up onto shore. That was close. Good thinking. Pinocchio, Geppetto, rose to his feet. The cricket was there beside him. But where was Pinocchio? And then they found him. Pinocchio was face down, his head in a puddle. Pinocchio! We were too late. Geppetto and the cricket wept over Pinocchio, the boy puppet, who laid still in the water. Then in a flash, guess who was there? The blue fairy. Pinocchio, she said, you saved your father. You proved you're both brave and true. She tapped his head with her wand and said, now you'll be a real boy. Pinocchio woke up. He looked at his soft arms and his soft legs. Father, look, I'm a real boy. Bet you are, cried Geppetto. The blue fairy turned to the cricket. Come, she said. In a flash, the two of them were gone. And they lived many long and happy years together. So that is the story of Pinocchio. And that is why you should do what you're told and listen to your mom and dad. And also make sure that if you get in trouble, you try as hard as you can to make sure that you get back to your mom and dad and you listen to what they say and they're only doing it to keep you safe. So I love you very much. Your granny G loves you very much. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Bye now.